please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Fear and panic selling grips the Lal Street Nifty slums to its lowest level in 2018. Sensex sheds over 400 after turning negative for the year just yesterday. Bank stocks take it on the chin as the index breaks below its 200-day moving average. State Bank of India and ICICI Bank are among the top losers today. Sun Pharma tanks in trade after the company's halol plant receives three observations by the U.S. Drug Administrator. Other pharma stocks like Lupin and Cadilla fall in sympathy. Sugar stocks continue their slide after the industry body ISMA expects a sugar glut this year. Production target for 2018 could be revised upwards tomorrow. Shares of oil refineries were the only patch of green or the few patches of green. Those stocks rise due to weak crude prices. Stocks of commercial vehicles companies also closed uh, marginally in the red after a strong showing in the first half of the day. Well, those were the top five headlines from what was a dreary day of trading for the bulls. Hello and welcome to Markets Today Talkback, the show where we tell you about all those eight hours of hectic trading in just five headlines. I'm Lata Venkatesh. With me, my colleague Prashant Nair. Hi, Prashant. Hi, Lata. You know, uh, as they say, be careful what you wish for. You <laughs> actually sometimes get it. We were complaining about the day being quite very quiet. In the morning. Uh, yes. You know, as late as actually 1:30, <laughs> and then. And all drama after two. All drama. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, we're going to uh, get to the market, of course, and uh, the top five stories of the day in just a bit over the next 30 minutes or so. Our market experts will be answering your questions, which you get to us every day. We have uh, Prakash Devan and Mitesh Thakkar. Uh, on the fundamentals and the technicals who are with us here. Gentlemen, thanks very much, both of you, for being with us here on the show. But let's wrap things up uh, for the day, uh, as always. I mean, uh, I think, you know, when we say wrap things up, we just need to wrap up the last one, one and a half odd hours or so, because that's where all the action was. Lata. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, early morning, we actually started with a spring in the step because it looked like President Trump uh, was willing to negotiate on the tariffs, uh, you know, tariffs if NAFTA is not renegotiated, was his uh, tweet. And the Asian shares did well, uh, Wall Street did well. But uh, we also opened up on these uh, positive global cues. But then the fall started. And uh, today we fell despite Asia and Europe being in the green. And we fell hard despite no specific bad news uh, coming. I mean, minor news like Sun Pharma, but not really any big bad macro that need have dragged us down. So it was. Uh, what was worse was it was all round selling. Mm. Uh, there was practically no segment that was spared. And uh, there is a technical factor to it because that once that 10,300 was given up around 2 o'clock, that is, the, you started to see, uh, you know, practically people throwing in the towel. So probably some kind of algorithmic trading when the, uh, uh, you know, the lower bound of the range seemed to give way. Uh, banks were, of course, the worst performer but by no means the only bad performers. You'll tell us more about all the oh, stocks. Yeah. I mean, I'm calling it sudden death. Uh, yeah. I think it uh, kind of uh, describes it uh, uh, pretty mm -hmm. aptly. So, you know, uh, everything was down. So, uh, so I'm not going to uh, go on with a lot of stocks, but just let's just focus on sectors. Uh, and uh, these are some of the uh, sectors which lost the most. I mean, so PSU banks, uh, almost 3%, private bank index, 1.3%. The Nifty Bank was down 1.5%. Uh, look at real estate, infrastructure, auto. I mean, uh, got smashed completely. Uh, in terms of stocks, Sun Pharma, ICICI Bank, Mahindra and Mahindra. So, Pharma, ba Private Bank and Auto covered there in those three names, representative of what happened to others in that space as well. And then you look at uh, public sector banks, SBI, Bank of Baroda. Uh, you could look at Bob as well, but I wanted to uh, point out Bank of India, which uh, sold off actually a lot more, was down 6.5%. Uh, losses in the broader market, uh, you know, so DHFL, BEML, look at that, I mean, 7.5% gone. Uh, basically, back at uh, before the rally on BEML today by close. United Spirits lost another 5%. Radico was lower. Uh, so, I mean, that group did qu quite poorly. Adani Group stocks, Enterprises, Power, both uh, got hit pretty badly. 7 and a quarter on Enterprises, 4.5 on Power. Uh, Balrampur, but the entire sugar space, the space was space. really, uh, you know, knocked out of the park. Future consumer was lower, and uh, you had something like a Reliance Naval, which was lower as well. I could go on, but mm. uh, you 
get the idea. The big losers, of course. Uh, let's get to our experts then. Uh, Mitesh, uh, uh, no point catching a falling knife uh, or is there a trade in the short side even at these levels? Uh, good evening, Lata. I think, yes, there's a trade on the short side. As you rightly said, you know, that uh, technically what happened was possibly uh, the earlier low was broken. And we had seen 10,300, 320 levels play out a couple of times. So when a support is being broken, typically you would feel some kind of increased uh, thrust on the downside. And I think that is what is happening. I think maybe around 10,120, 130, which is where the 200-day uh, average for the Nifty comes in, could be the next area where the index could take support. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, a similar question to you. Uh, Prakash, uh, are you catching this falling knife or are you waiting for the four-figure number? No, I, I don't think uh, either of the strategies is wrong. Uh, it, it depends on how invested you are. For, for some of the portfolios where we were sitting on cash, we started deploying that. In fact, today's last hour uh, sell-off was uh, an opportunity that actually a lot of people would have again missed out on uh, because, mm -hmm. you know, everybody was frozen into inaction uh, given the kind of sharp sell-off that we saw. But uh, my sense is, to, uh, you know, as rationality prevails, Lata, there will be buying that will come in between today and uh, uh, today's levels and, and probably 9,800, which technically uh, is what my colleagues tell me is, is also imminent on the markets. But that, that's fine. I mean, you know, stock-specific activity will go on. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you know, it depends essentially on what your time horizon is and what you want to do in the market. Uh, well put there. The second headline of the day, uh, bank stocks take it on the chin as the index breaks below its 200-day moving average. Uh, even though the bank nifty recovered a little bit in the last hour, uh, the long-standing NPF fears made the banks uh, lose uh, I mean, a fair bit across the board, as I pointed out. I mean, the PSU band bank index was down almost 3%. We've got a question. Uh, Twitter user Samir has 1,000 shares of Kotak Mahindra Bank, uh, which he's purchased at 327 uh, rupees and 600 shares of ICICI Bank, which is paid 210 rupees each for. And his question is, should he book partial profits or hold on uh, to these names? Prakash, what would you tell him? So I think Kotak definitely uh, seems to be in, in, on a fairly sound footing. So I wouldn't worry about you know any moves uh, downwards from where it has been. Uh, I, it's a recommendation to continue holding, don't book out even partially. But I see it's a bank, if that's the other one, if I got it right, mm. uh, is somewhere, is, is, is in that throes of, you know, this entire corporate, uh, you know, facing banks, you know, getting questioned on, on the processes, on, on the kind of, you know, lending mechanism that they have used and the checks and balances. So there will be some element of uh, doubt that will kind of, you know, prevail on the market price. Uh, and, and there he could probably book out and, you know, maybe buy into at lower levels so that he has a better acquisition cost. But uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank, he could probably sleep quietly and, uh, and wait for it to get, emerge stronger in this entire mess. Okay. I, I'm sure the purchase price could not have been 327. I don't remember the stock going that low. Uh, I mean, I, I'm very much mistaken. Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I say, say bank at 210 seems a great buy. Uh, he's in the money, but uh, the advice is not to take uh, uh, off your money from uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank. Uh, well, let's get to the next one. Uh, Twitter user An Anbu, uh, I hope that's her name, is holding 400 Punjab National Bank shares, which he bought for 187 rupees. What should he do? Uh, okay, uh, 187 rupees, so that's quite a bit of losses. Mitesh, you want to take this one? Yeah, so uh, one, I think, you know, it's been unfortunate the way the story is folded out. Of course, every PSU bank has been underperforming and going through correction. This one has had it severely, purely because of, of the uh, news flow. Uh, having said that, I think the stock has multiple lows and uh, strong bottoms around the area of 65 to 75. Look look back from the chart from 2009, the stock bottomed out around 68. Then we had a bottom on 16 around 72 levels, 2016 at about 72 levels. So the entire zone of 75 to 65 has been filled in with support. So I think might as well want to average it out at, at, at levels of closer to about 80 to about 75. And uh, once he gets a bounce back, I think anything close to about 125, 130 would be good exit price. That might take a few months. But I think that that seems to be a good strategy to get into. Can you come to think of it that 187 was just about 30 days back. No, it was Jan 27th or 28th that the stock was at that level. You know, the day and when then February 1st, the first 280 crore. Yeah. And then, of course, I think February 6th was it when the next uh, 
uh, $2 billion fraud so, was So the day the $2 billion, 11,000 crores, 11,000 crores and some change, the yeah. headline came in the morning. Uh, I mean, I think the price was about 135, 140 or, 45. or so. Mm. So it's... Uh, a it seminal fallen, fall that they yeah, saw. Big fall. Okay. Well, uh, let's get to the third headline of the day. Sun Pharma slipped in trade today after the stock reacted to details of three observations that were made on the company's halol plant by the U.S. Drug Administrator. Other pharma stocks like Lupin and Cadilla also fell in tandem. Okay, we have questions. We've got a question coming in from Shiraz, who's tweet, who's tweeted to us that he's got a thousand shares of Sun Pharma. He's paid an average of 550 rupees. Uh, per share and he essentially wants to know what he should be uh, doing. Uh, so Prakash, why don't you take this, uh, hold or sell? No, I think it's a hold. Uh, I, I do understand that, uh, you know, three observations from the US FDA and the EIR uh, do point out some sort of a time that will go into the remediation, particularly, you know, since they've talked about airflow studies that would need to be conducted. Uh, but, you know, having said that, you know, this is an area of uh, concern that's behind us now. Uh, it could have been much worse, you know, these three observations seem to be much milder than uh, what, what we've seen historically plague the company in terms of quality following. Uh, so, so very clearly, once the U.S. market, which is about 13-15% of their overall bottom line, uh, starts picking up again, it can it can seriously change the trajectory. So give it some time. Don't be in a hurry to kind of you know book out or, or see some great numbers happen here. But given six months, uh, it could probably be in that 620, 630 zone very comfortably, which is which is a decent 20% upside uh, for for this uh, purchase price. Okay. So medicine for an injured investor, Sun Pharma. Another Twitter user has written to us, Rajan. He has uh, 500 shares of uh, uh, Marxins Pharma. And that he has purchased at uh, 40 per share. What should be his target for a three-year period? Okay. Uh, three-year period, again, I'll have to come to you. Uh, uh, Prakash, you have a view on this stock, Marks and Pharma. Yeah, so, you know, this, this has been a stock that's, uh, we, we all know the history, the way, you know, it kind of uh, came from the same family that uh, uh, Glenmark. 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 Yeah. But it's decided to focus on, uh, you know, in ointments and gels. Yeah. Uh, and, and this company chose to focus on a different segment. A lot of that is OTC as well. So it hasn't had issues which you typically find on the generic side, uh, which larger pharma companies have done. So it's, it's been fairly, uh, uh, you know, indifferent to the chaos that exists uh, for most of it's the large It's not made companies. money either, but, uh, Prakash. Whether it's a three-year growth story, uh, you know, yeah, it's not. It's not. That's what I was saying. So it, it's been on the sidelines trying to do its own thing, but it's not a big segment that it caters to. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't recommend a three-year hold on this, uh, okay. Latha, for, uh, you know, very simple reasons that go latch on to a story that is uh, visible enough and that's in the making rather than you know a binary situation where this might do something and i might make money that that's not the way to invest yeah. uh, you know you're not playing a game of rule you want to uh, basically make sure that you understand the odds the probabilities the you know the visibility of mm -hmm. how things could pan out for your in your favor look at a company like granules okay. a smaller company so let's say if this investor is looking at three years Granules is the way they have upped their game in mm. terms of, uh, you know, posting yeah. so many, filing so many approvals in the pipeline, okay. implementing what they have. The promoters have uh, shown confidence. I would switch into Granules Fair. India, uh, not stick to Marxins. Fair enough. Very quickly, uh, 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 Mitesh, uh, uh, is it time to uh, take a look at Pharma for a one-year view, uh, sector or stock? Uh, maybe yes, I think, you know, there are a lot of stocks now showing signs of bottoming out on the medium to long term charts and key amongst them will be Sun Pharma and possibly Aurobindo Pharma. Biocon of course hasn't corrected, so I think I will exclude that out. But I think Sun Pharma now has been in this range of about 550, 570 on the upside to roughly about uh, 485 on the downside for about 10 months now. I think good base building happening. I think the reversal should come in soon in the, in the next few months. So if somebody wants to accumulate, I think these are good levels to get into these two stocks particularly. Uh, Mitesh and uh, Prakash, uh, hold on, and uh, we come back to you with more questions that our viewers have uh, sent us. We have to take a very quick break at this stage, uh, but stay right here. Uh, more questions and more answers coming right up. We also spoke with Kenneth Rogoff, uh, the famed professor 
and uh, this is these are his thoughts on uh, the possibility of a trade war escalation and the impact it may have on the US and world economy listen and we we'll leave you with that sound bite see you in a bit I tend to think we will see a version of this tariff but I'm not sure that there's more to follow he has to do it for his base and let's not forget if Bernie Sanders were president and possibly the next democrat if there's a democratic american president they're going to want a very similar thing their base is screaming for it so we're going to get it but i don't necessarily think it's going to turn into a trade war uh, it's quantitatively not that big in the united states the tariff number is going to have a tiny tiny effect on inflation because it's very small the impact on the us economy is small what is going to have an impact is that global growth is returning unemployment is uh, very low and of course we have a pretty big fiscal stimulus in the US Welcome back you with us here on Markets Today talk back last one hour brutal for bulls big sell off uh, what do you do now that's the question we try to answer here uh, every day at 4:30 Uh, Mitesh and Prakash are with us, uh, taking your questions. We've got uh, we've gotten through three uh, of the top stories of the day, so let's get to the fourth one. Uh, it was a bitter day for sugar stocks. This, after the Indian Sugar Mills Association (ISMA) said that they have revised the production target for the current year sugar production target to 26.1 million tons from 25.1 million tons, which was uh, there earlier. But they might also revise this new production target even higher. uh the board meet is scheduled for tomorrow and uh, that is when we may actually get this new uh, target we spoke with the director of uh, the uh, sugar association abhinash verma let's listen in to what he had to say in the full year estimates we will be actually visiting the whole thing tomorrow in our board meeting uh-huh. so i don't have an official number there uh-huh. uh, yes we did uh, revise our estimate on the 17th of january uh, to 261 lakh tons uh-huh. but from that date onwards we are seeing that the uh, yields in maharashtra and north karnataka are giving us real surprises and the yields uh, per hectare there are probably coming out to the best or the highest ever probably in the history and that is why we will uh, have to revise our production estimates uh, tomorrow in our board meeting okay uh, now for some questions on these stocks twitter user rajan has 1200 shares of renuka sugars purchased at 22 rupees uh, what could be the long term target for the stock long term as in first a one year target uh, uh, mitesh yeah so malata i think the stock is not doing much it's basically you know if you look at the last two year uh, price history i think it's only once gone to about levels of 22 uh, half 23 mm. and then that breakout kind of failed so it's doing a range of about 12 to about 20 19 20 on the upside so i would say whenever you get close to about 19 20 exit take a minor loss and get into the gains okay well not to keep the faith uh prakash i mean generally on uh, sugar what is your view um, I think uh, you know apart from these estimates getting revised upwards which mean uh, you know sugar manufacturer are going to have a raw deal in terms of price realization uh, the the cycle will give you clear indication if it is turning and and lata would tell you very distinctly that the secular trend in a sugar cycle is so long and strong that uh, even if you miss out by a couple of months you at least still have about 30 35 months to go with so uh you know that that's not something which you're going to miss out on so don't be in a hurry to jump into mm-hmm. this uh, trade at at this point in time and there are some good stocks now available at lower levels uh, balrampur and you know some things like that which which i would definitely want to buy but uh, you know once i'm clear there's an indication that the cycle is turning favorable for them yeah. uh, at some point in time yeah they've all halved and it's quite possible that if as abhinash verma said there is you know next year can be an even more abundant sugar year then prices could still head south so time to buy will perhaps be a little later final headline uh, of the day from the stock markets among the stocks in focus today were the oil refineries which gained on the back of weak crude prices uh, the other stocks that gained commercial vehicles like ashok linen and aisha motors closed uh, uh, were in the green for a better part of the day but closed marginally in the red 
uh, after, of course, seeing a strong first half. Uh, let's listen to what both the managements of Aishar and Ashok Leland had to say on their growth outlook. The government is mulling about giving about 5 lakhs of rupees for uh, you know vehicles which are over 15 year old. We'll have to wait and see for the announcement. But having said that, what I can tell you is that uh, if this were to happen, some of the larger fleet operators who have uh, older vehicles may want to actually switch over very quickly to the newer vehicles. So this is a, uh, this is a very, very positive uh, development and I think in terms of uh, you know the demand it's a little difficult to forecast but i would say that two to three years of uh, you know industry volume is what you would see in the initial year or couple of years as a replacement volume if things go well the end of life policy we are expecting uh, to come from government and uh, there are positive sentiments in the economy like we have seen good movement in fmcg good movement good movement in consumer goods uh, consumer durables and, uh, and then rural economy also should uh, chip in. So uh, there are very good, uh, you can say, positive factors uh, which may spur the growth for the next year. We are expecting good growth, especially in quarter one. Uh, last year, quarter one was very depressed because of the movement from BS3 to BS4. So quarter one, there will be very good growth quarter and quarter as compared to the previous year. And, uh, and then uh, we will also take steps to increase the capacity as we go along. Okay, uh, so we've got a question. Uh, Twitter user Dhruv uh, has 400 shares of Aisha. He wants to know what could be his target for one to two years. We don't know the cost or anything, but basically wants to know if he held it, uh, what would what could he, what could the stock get to over the next year or two? Prakash, autos to you. Well, I think. Uh this is a wonderful opportunity to buy into Aisha. We, we, you know, one of the reasons that the sell-off has happened is a lot of uh, you know ETFs that track uh, some of these sector indices and and the general indices would have seen that erosion. But uh, there's no fundamental change in either the sales of Royal Enfield. In fact, I'm very bullish on two of the new launches that are in the offing, and and that would also mean that it reinforces the Royal Enfield brand apart from just a bullet uh, uh, product right now. And, and the commercial side, the Volvo business, uh, Volvo Aisha is also taken off in a very significant way because the kind of segments that it is catering to are the ones that are seeing upswing for either a Ashok mm. Leyland or for that matter a Tata Motors. So absolutely a, a great combination of both things working for them. Price target could probably be around 34, 34 mm. and a half uh, in, in the next 12 months, uh, very comfortably uh, from where it is today. 400 shares of Aishar is already one crore, so he can sit on and make uh, much more. Well, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much, Prakash and Mitesh, for joining us. We have to wrap up this edition of uh, Markets Today. Talk back. Thanks for watching.